check. Where's the outlet? Yeah. That was up top. Good. Okay. Okay, I'm going to lift it up by rolling to the side, then you push it. Okay. Tell us when to push. Push. There. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Now lift. Okay. That's exactly where we want it. That's where we want it. Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, everybody. <clears throat> so it's another day, and it's the day before we hope to get buffalo. So the guy in Houston who's going to be bringing up the buffalo, it's been raining here off and on for the last couple days. Um, as long as he can pull his big trailer in to his property near Houston and not sink to the ground, he's going to bring them. So there's no guarantee, but... We're hoping it's tomorrow. So today means we do a bunch of water tanks, as you can see. We just unloaded our water tank here that we got. The other two that we've had are 5,000 gallon tanks. This one's only a 3,000 gallon tank because it's just gonna do this little pasture for a couple weeks here and there for a limited number of buffalo, and then they shoot off to the big pastures. So this is just a temporary setup. Nothing gonna be too long term, but since you just saw us unloading this thing, um, we kind of misjudged. Let me tell you about it. This is the damage from the roof that we just did. As you can see, we collapsed it. Um, we were a little too close when we stood it back up. But I was hoping we would fit underneath the roof, and uh, we don't. So right now, this looks like a very good spot. So we are actually just right across at the 1,200 square foot home. And there's the water tank, the trough. Um, this will probably give us about, I don't know, I would say probably about three, maybe four feet of drop to get to the tank. Um, so that won't give us a ton of water pressure, but hopefully it'll give us enough water pressure. So on the agenda today is we're gonna finish setting up this tank. We're gonna try and fill the tank. We have some connectors that we've been collecting over the last number of hours. We're gonna get the fittings all attached to it. We've got the trash pump and we're gonna get this going. Um, last time, if you remember from us doing all this in that episode, um, we're trying to get water through the IBC totes. We've also tried it through 55 gallon drums. I'm gonna try something a little bit bigger. We decided to get a thousand gallon tank and she's about six feet tall or so, about five and a half or so feet wide. And we are gonna put that more in the middle of the trailer here. And that will be strapped down. And we're gonna fill that up. Just Jeff. Doing good, doing good. Okay, okay. All right, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, gosh, already, huh? Yeah, no. Nah. No, nah, I hadn't. Okay. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, just let me know what number it is and you know, we'll, we'll figure that out then. No, I don't. So it'll be just yours. Around 9, 9.30 to 10.30? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Appreciate it. Okay, bye. So that was a dude down in Houston confirming he is going to drop them off tomorrow. So that's good news. Anyway, we've got to get cracking on this water tank. I don't even remember what in the world I was just saying. We're going to set this up. We're going to put the trough over there. And... We're going to stick it in this little 1,000-gallon tank, use it to transfer. Uh, it just made it simpler than having to reprime the pump or fight that every single time we move it from IBC to IBC to IBC or those 55-gallon drums. So we're going to use this 1,000-gallon container, one big guy, and I'm going to suck it out of the bottom. I think I got the connections for that. So let's check that out and hopefully get this thing cracking pretty quick. We have to get a little bit organized so we've been to the store we've gotten some fittings we've got everything kind of laid out here this is kind of how we're going to be doing this now this tank is going to be a temporary tank i'm not going to have this be a long-term solution right here 
So I do want to have it be removable, but we're going to just sacrifice some pipes. So here's what we're doing. We're taking this two inch male adapter, two inch pipe, we're going to thread it in. We're going to follow it up with this ball valve. Then we're going to take it and immediately go to this reducer and put it down to one inch. I would have gone three quarter, but after the cold, nobody has three quarter fittings right now. So it's going to go right down to one inch and then we're going to take the one inch pipe and we're going to put that right in there and then we're going to shoot it and we're going to go all the way down to the trough with these 20 foot sections of one inch pipe. When we get to the point that we're going to move this and, and get rid of it and, and ship it somewhere else or reposition, um, I'm just going to use this as a sacrifice piece, at least initially, and we're just going to cut it at some point and then ship it. Um, I could have gotten one of those threaded couplings. I just didn't care. Didn't, didn't do it. So we're just going to sacrifice that. And then this will always be associated with this tank. This tank is small enough and this pasturing system and the handling facility is small enough that this will do its job for the temporary time frame that it needs to be. So let's get cracking and get doing this before it gets too dark. Now that we've got all the one inch pipe connected, next step is to get over here towards the trough. We're making some executive decisions here. So this is just going to be a pipe along the ground. Um, like I said, it's temporary. Right now, if we just have the pipe coming up between these posts, there's nothing going to support it. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and move the trough over to here, the post, and then we're going to try and anchor it to the post and then have it drop down into the water trough and hopefully that'll give it some stability. So we're gonna try and shift this over a little bit and then work the piping thereafter. Okay, our last little bit in here is going to be the adapter, which is going to take it from the three-quarter inch and give us a three-quarter inch female adapter fitting. And then that's what the Rojo's valve is going to screw into and sit right in here. We're going to come back tomorrow super early in the morning. We're going to secure this up in position, attach the actual fitting, um, the valve itself, and we're going to start getting a bunch of water in the tank. We've also got a hookup, which we'll show you tomorrow, hooking up the, the 1,000 gallon tank and getting that set up so that way we can detachably do everything and so anyway that's coming up tomorrow so we will catch you then bye and just like that we're back the next day so we just purchased something for our very first time
Mm, little treat bags. We got some range cubes. So uh, I just said range cubes and they said, here's your bags. So this is kind of the stuff that they have in them, 20% protein and all that other jazz. So this is our little treat to say thank you for the little buffalo. They're gonna be traveling two and a half hours up today. Um, and so we need to get cracking. As you can tell, probably around me, hopefully, it's a little misty, a little foggy, and it's a little wet. So we got everything done yesterday with a trough, um, actually almost. So let's just actually go check that out real quick. And then we're gonna have to get cranking on and get some water moved. So we got up really early this morning. I think yesterday we got home at like 10 o'clock almost at night and woke up at 4.30ish and left by five. So it's been a long day or two. I was gonna say, I know way it's high. low, way high on the back side. Looks pretty tight. All right, back to the tank. So this 1,000 gallon tank is gonna to be to transfer the water from the pond to the big guys. This, in the future, may not always be this purpose, so we don't wanna make anything down here super permanent, but we need to be able to fill it in from the top from the trash pump that we have. We're gonna suck it out of the lake and there's gonna be the red hose and just go over the top. So we need the bottom to have a shutoff valve. And that's what we have here. Then the other issue we're having is that the tank or the, the suction, we want to suction off the bottom because the last times we tried doing this with the IBC totes, we'd stick the green tube for the suction in and it's got such a coil that it wouldn't go all the way down in the IBC tote. So I want to suck it out of the bottom, but it has a male connector on it. And uh, if we were to stick that in there and rotate it, it doesn't swivel independently, so we'd have to rotate the whole hose. Anyway, to make it simple, we got this little joint coupling. So I can put it here, and I can just swivel this guy instead of having to swivel the whole hose. So that's why we have this here, otherwise we wouldn't need that. We would have just taken this, if I can get it, and we would have just put it right here. But because of that swivel, that's why we want this. Now, I do recognize that we do not need such long connections. Um, it's what we have, and uh, it's not perfectly edged, but it'll be good. This isn't gonna hold water long-term. It's all temporary, and we'll have the shutoff valve here, so I'm not worried about this right yet. Um, it's all doable. Also, if we ever had to cut these down, we have a little extra room. So, we're gonna get this done, and then start moving some water. Don't stop. Why don't we go this way? Okay. Now let's push it back. and you can try backing the truck up. Thank you. All right, that's good. Ready? All right, it's coming to you. but it's pouring down some serious rain. Just got a text from the dude, he's gonna be here at 10.30. Okay. Um, we might let the rain pass, 
before we actually fill something up because we have a contingency plan. If we can't get water in there, we have water that's already out there in some ponds and pasture six. We're gonna let them over there. So we're probably gonna let the water pass, the rain, and then jump back on this when it finally clears, which may be soon. Okay, we've strapped this sucker down with a green. We should be good. The tank comes with these little, ah. The tank comes with these little V grooves here at four points, opposite and then it crosses back over. So that helps it actually get a tie down spot since it doesn't have any rings. Um, but we're all tied down at four corners. Now we centered it as much as we could over these tires. The tank is actually a thousand gallons. So if we fill this thing to the full brim, that's gonna be 8,000 pounds, give or take a wee bit. Um, I think my trailer's only rated at 7,000. So we're actually not gonna fill it totally full just because I don't wanna go ahead and have a problem with busting an axle today. So we're gonna get this thing cranking and kinda see how fast this actually times and goes, right? So we'll see. It's gonna be about 1,000 gallons, probably a little less. We're a little full. I'm gonna let out just a little bit because we've got some bumps in the road. The trailer's squatting pretty good, but it's not too bad. We're gonna run with this and see if we can get everything done. We're gonna clean this up here, move it back up, and start unloading this into the big trailer, or the big tank. All right, now the, the trick is gonna be, no one is tall enough on their own to get all the way up there. <laughs> so we're gonna find something to step on, like a ladder. Yes, pumpkin, good idea, a ladder.
never seen the sight on this thing before. You never? Yeah, I've never seen the sight on this thing. Stay back here. This is the water coming out. That isn't too bad. That is not too bad at all. Okay, so this is only 1,000 gallons in it. And we're only about three or four feet vertical drop, so that's actually pretty good flow in my opinion. It's not perfect, but it's good enough flow for now, I think. So the guy's supposed to be here probably in about 10, 15 minutes with a buffalo. We will finish up the tanks after that but this is the first thousand gallons that will fill this up and empty that one quite a bit. So the animals will have some water, we'll play around with them for a little bit and then we'll get back to work while the guy goes and gets the second load hopefully today. So in the meantime Nathan is putting some other area of barbed wire where we had some dips when we were doing the fencing. You probably saw that from that video and uh, so they're lowering that. And then a couple of the girls are going around and putting more staples in the posts where we didn't put staples before because we didn't have enough at that time. So we're touching up some of the things here, getting ready for those buffalo. All right. So our, our buffalo guy, he took off to go get the second round of animals. So this first batch was 13 animals in total. Um, I didn't count them. Mari said she said there's 13. Brent said there was 13. Um, so we have one of the ones that we were going to be buying actually had a baby probably two months ago. It was real late. I, we never saw the baby. Um, He's actually got a couple other buffalo that have the exact same number, so we're going to figure some of that out. But he went back to go with the second load, and he won't move the mom with the two-month-old baby um, with everybody else. So he's just going to bring the other ten, I believe it is. And in the meantime, we got to count some numbers and kind of figure out who we have and check them off our list. But the buffalo are doing good. They're on the far side away from us. We just gave them some hay. They'll start eating that. Um, there isn't a lot here. For them to eat so i might have to be coming up periodically and just giving them hay but the waterer the hay everything seems to be doing pretty good so far so we're going to try and get these buffalo to move the rest of today we need to go get another hay ring and we got to go move two to three thousand more gallons since we just put a lot of that water 
into a trough. Still a ton of stuff to do, but in the meantime, we got buffalo. So, all right, it's been a year, a year since we've had this land to get buffalo. Now we've got buffalo. We just got back from filling up another thousand gallon tank and the buffalo were over here actually drinking out of the water. So um, this was full to the brim when we left and 20 minutes later, the sucker's gone. So they've been thirsty. They probably haven't drank all day. And so they all just came over here and started doing it. Anyway, um, I got some numbers, still working on that one. Um, we'll keep tabs, but it's back to more tankage. <laughs> adjusted the little yellow ball multiple times and there's a spring in there that the ball is attached to that comes up and closes the valve and it's completely submerged at this point and it still can kind of push up a little bit on the spring but I think it's low enough and I don't want to push all this water out because I want the buffalo to come over and drink it down but you know it's borderline right at the edge so you know if this isn't enough and it needs to go further then it's just gonna keep spilling so I think we're good with it right now I'm gonna see if it's gonna be continually any water over time but you know if it if there's any water coming out it's so small and I don't know if it'll make much difference but I think we're good on the float so I'm gonna call this done for now and I'm just gonna keep monitoring it and see over time if it goes over our well guy just left <clears throat> and the news that I got isn't super cool Around the 500 foot mark is where the pump used to be and then it's a 700 foot well all the way back down. And right past the water level at 500, we hit 504 and there's something we can only see that's very tube-like and it's filling up half of it and we can't go down any further. There's something there and we gotta get it out or do a different well. And I don't know which one we're gonna do yet. So if you have any suggestions, let me know, but it's, it's just a crescent, big crescent, and anytime we spin around the camera to see different things, it just pivots right on that wall, and that crescent goes right around. So, um, I don't know. It's about a four or five month wait list to get a well right now, and a lot of money. It should be a little bit there. There we go. 
Alright guys, it's getting kind of late. We're wrapping things up today. We now have a total of 24 buffalo that have arrived. Things are looking good. Once the second group came, they seemed to kind of socialize a lot better and didn't seem to care that we were around. They're like, who cares? We're gonna get some water. So, they're good looking girls. There's a couple that are smaller. Um, they all vary a little bit, so we're gonna have to watch them in the coming weeks. Share them with you. We do not have names for any of them but we'll share with you a little bit of the ones that we do like and some of the ones that we think are looking really, really good. Um, we have 12 of them that are pregnant. There are five that we don't know if they're pregnant and then there's another seven that we know are not pregnant. So they're a little bit of different ages. Okay, we hope you enjoyed today and uh, like and subscribe. We've got buffalo now, it's one of the first animals, but in a couple weeks, we're gonna get more, because we still have to get our two boys over here. So nine more coming in a couple weeks. And uh, anyway, it's a good journey. Talk to you later, bye. With you, I wanna stay with you.